back to Charmin's Kitchen. Today, I just want to shout out to my viewers and subscribers. I want to wish you guys a very beautiful weekend. I don't know if you have a long weekend, but here in Canada, we have a long weekend. So I'm very excited when the weather is nice. And today we have beautiful sunshine outside and I'm in the mood for Kitri. And Kitri is a dish that is made all over the world in different, different ways and different techniques. So today I'm gonna be making Kitri Guyana style and sa barbecue salmon bite. And I would like to share this special recipe with you guys as well I'm, as I'm gonna be, my family will be eating it today. So if you come on down, I'll show you my way of making Kitri. So guys, for the Kitri, I have um, one and a half cup of split peas that I'm gonna wash and soak. I like to soak it a little before I cook the kitri and then I'm gonna put this to boil and when I'm cooking the split peas I'm cooking it um, not fully done I'm cooking it cooking it halfway done before I add the rice and all the other ingredients this is the split peas I had soaking I wash it and then I soak it so what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna strain it out from this water that I had it soaking into and then I'm gonna put it in the pot to start cooking. And like I said, I'm not gonna cook it fully done. I'm gonna cook it halfway and I'll show you guys because when I add the rice, the rice have to cook as well and the split, split peas will still be cooking. So we don't want the split peas for this dish. You don't want the split peas to melt. You want when the dish is done, you can still see the little grains of the split peas and that's how you make kitri. So I'm gonna drain this water and then I'll put it into my pot with boiling water with a little bit of salt and then we will cook it and show you guys how, how the step-by-step -step how to make this dish. So guys, we're using the fresh coconut for the kitri and my husband just broke it and he's taking them out the shell like this and this is the shell here. You just have to put something a little bit with a um, little bit sharp like a, a butter knife or something under the shell and you will get it out. And this is how we used to do it in Guyana. And we still like to do it like this because you get the freshness from the coconut milk. So he's taking out one of the coconut. He's going to rinse it out to wash away all the dust from the shell. And he have this amazing, amazing machine here that he's going to get the milk out of it for, for me. And then we will use freshly great, uh, sorry, freshly squeezed coconut milk for our kitri today. If you don't have fresh coconut, you can go ahead and use your canned coconut or your coconut powder or whatever you have. That's okay too, but um, I just, we, we just like to buy the fresh coconut and we usually make our own milk from it. And um, I find that it tastes very delicious with the fresh, the fresh coconut. So if you don't have it guys, go right ahead and use what you have. It's, it will still bring out a beautiful kitri for you. For all my Guyanese brothers and sisters and families and friends, what does this piece coconut look like? It looks like the map of Guyana. I just noticed when I look back in the picture that it looks like the map of Guyana. It's not perfectly done, but it looks very, very close. If you guys notice it, give me a shout out, leave me a comment and let me know. So guys, this is the split piece ready for me. Because if you notice, there's this, some of them are uh, smashing or falling apart. So I know that it's ready. It's half a cook. And around here, if you see these white frothy things, you have to take them out because these are the impurity of the split peas. And you don't want to cook it into your food. So sometimes you don't get all of it, but take out as much as you can. Everything out. So you want to cook the split peas with a little bit of water because you're going to add coconut milk. And like I show you guys, we, um, we were making our own coconut milk. And these are some of the ingredients that we're going to put into this kitchen. So I have one large white onion. I have here, let me see, Jessica, uh, six green onion i have two mariburi pepper i have one carrot that i'm going to be grating to put towards the end i have some okra 
and this is um, some frozen one. I always, when I see nice okra, I will buy them and freeze the young ones so I can put it in these kind of dishes. And I have some pumpkin here cut up into small pieces. And again, I froze it because sometimes when you're ready to make these dish, you won't always have it on hand. So I like to keep some of um, things like pumpkin, okra, and things like that that you're gonna be using for different kind of dishes, some frozen one just to have them handy. And this bowl here have the goal of the show, which is our freshly squeezed coconut milk, along with a little bit of water that we have from the split peas. This one whole um, coconut milk that I have here and maybe some more water. And we will put all this together to make the beautiful kitri today. Whatever I'm adding to this dish, I'll show you guys as I'm building flavor in the pot. And we will have our kitri today with some beautiful sa barbecue salmon bites. This is split pieces. This is just the way I want it. It's like halfway melting away, halfway there, but not fully cooked. And that's just how I like it. So I'm gonna add in the split pieces one and a half cup of split peas, and I add two cups of rice. And when I say cups, I'm talking about measuring cups, guys. So just so I'm, I'm giving you guys the right information, this is the measuring cup. So I use one and a half split peas and two of these with rice. So it's the measuring cup I'm using. And then I'm just gonna get in all this into here. And then now what I wanna do is stir it up and start building the flavor. So in the split peas, you can see here, that I have split peas everywhere and that's how I like my kitchen to be. So I'm gonna add into that the coconut milk and this is about one cup when we squeeze it from the machine that we have, it gives about one cup but that's the very, very thick, rich cream. It's like the creaminess of the um, coconut milk. So it's actually really, really rich and you can add water to that and it's gonna still be very, very um, rich in the dish. So I'm gonna just rinse out my um, coconut milk bowl. So I don't wanna waste any of that rich creaminess. So I'm just rinsing the bowl out to get out all of that creaminess. And then in here now, I'm gonna start adding all my ingredients. And I'm gonna start with my onion. So I have here my one onion that I chopped up and I'm gonna add it right there right now. And I'm gonna add my green onion that I, you guys see that I had my six green onion and I'm gonna add everything here now because it's gonna start cooking and this dish doesn't take long at all. It's so, so fast to prepare. Once your split piece is done cooking, then you add your rice and the rest of the ingredients and you just leave it to cook but you will have to keep checking and make sure that it's not burning so the green onion and the regular onion is in there i want to add salt and i'm not going to add too much salt i'm just going to add about one teaspoon for now because i had some salt in the split peas boiling maybe um just two teaspoons Tea two teaspoon and I will taste like I usually do before the pot, the dish is done and then I can regulate if I want to add more or not and look how beautiful that is you can see yellow green white and the coconut milk so now the next thing I want to add is my fine time and I had this washing out in some water because I don't want to have if there's dust or anything to go into the pot so for the fine time I like to, you can leave some of the sprigs to go in. It doesn't matter, that have a lot of flavor. You can take out some if you want and whatever fall into the pot, it's not a big deal because they have a lot, a lot of flavor. So what I usually do, pull it backwards and if those fine little uh, twigs go in, I will leave them and the end of the dish, you can always fish them out because it's loaded with flavor along with the leaf, I think. The stem have more flavor than the leaves, so I don't mind when um, some fall into the pot because I know the pot is gonna be very flavorful. If you notice, the it's already starting to cook. You can see from this corner here, Jesse. See, 
yes. that it's cooking up nicely and this, before you know it this is going to be done it's a beautiful day outside for after a very long time we had snow earlier this week we had um hail what last saturday or weekend and um it was raining most of the week i don't know if you guys had um rain at your side but it was raining pretty much for two days in this week or more and it was so cold we couldn't even go to the backyard so there is very very um, nice sunshine out and I can't wait to go out and have the din the lunch in the backyard and today is my plan to after lunch I'm gonna be planting my vegetable garden which I'm so excited about I can't even wait to start doing that so everything is in here I'm gonna add some pepper and I'm adding my two mariwiri pepper I like to put a little bit spice in this dish because it's um it's not cooking with meat but we usually add whatever meat or fish or anything to the side and that's why I'm gonna make this barbecue salmon bite so i'm adding that to pepper for flavor nice rich flavor and we can't forget to put some black pepper which is one one teaspoon of black pepper i'm gonna add into here and that's gonna flavor this dish up so beautifully so one teaspoon of black pepper and that's gonna be so nice for this dish i might have to add a little bit more water but um, I can taste and add as I go. And this dish, they normally cook this dish mostly on the wet side, not too dry. So I'm gonna make sure that I make it with the right texture that we're supposed to have it as. So now what I wanna add is my pumpkin. And these are frozen pumpkin. They were cut, washed, and I put them to freeze and this is gonna add a nice sweetness to this dish along with the coconut milk plus it will pumpkin is very good and this is the butternut squash I'm using so I add that and look at the color guys oh my god so beautiful and for kitri you don't need to add any cas rip or tiny sauce but what I like to do I like to add a little tiny bit of turmeric powder which turmeric is very good for us it's a good um good spice for our health but it, along with that it's gonna put a beautiful flavor in here so i'm gonna add a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric i'm adding my quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric right now and this little bit is gonna go a long way you don't want it to be too too bright but look at this already oh my god this looks so beautiful right jess yes i want to eat some i know so this is already giving a nice um color to the dish and like I said, turmeric is super, super good. And turmeric, when you use it with a good fat, it's amazing. And in here, I have the good fat, which is the coconut milk. So perfect combination. So the next thing I want to add now is my okra. And I have a nice amount of okra here. And when it's frozen, guys, it's always easy to cook after. And I have a bowl of spinach that I'm going to be adding into there and my carrot. So I'm going to get my, wash my spinach, grate my carrot and come right back and show you guys. So guys, I add about three cups more of water. As you cook, you will know if you have to add more or not. So I did add about three cups more of water along with the coconut milk that I add add in there but look how beautiful this dish is looking i'm just gonna taste to see if there's enough salt or if i have to add any more because this is the good point when you can do so and it it's perfect so what I'm, i can taste that pepper nice pepper flavor what i want to do at this point i want to add that one grated carrot and look how beautiful guys look how beautiful that is so what i love about this dish I have split peas in there which is very very good for you and we have um, okra pumpkin we have coconut milk we have carrot and then I'm gonna add spinach and you know you can cut the carrot up into small pieces and add it but I like to add it um, shred it and then add it towards the end because it's not over cooking and it's gonna be nice still nice and fresh and it adds 
great sweetness to this dish and it's another way if your kids doesn't eat vegetable to sneak it into there but i don't have a problem with that with my kids but sometimes i like to um grate it because of because i like to add it towards the end so i have a whole bunch of spinach here i have about two cups or more of baby spinach that i'm gonna add here now and i am washing them i wash them very clean and had them soaking in water just in case if there is any dust or anything on these spinach so you don't want to chew sand or mud or anything in your in your food so you want to make sure that you wash them clean so i'm gonna just stir this up and leave it to steam cook in the dish and this is almost done guys this is a part of richness this is a part of a lot of flavor and amazing goodness very healthy stuff that your that will be very good for your family so we're gonna have a beautiful look how nice that look beautiful so once it's done i'll show you guys and i'm gonna be start i'm gonna be working on my salmon my barbecue salmon bites while this is finishing off so guys look at the beauty here oh my god it looks so beautiful everything is cooking nicely i put it on very low heat so it's taking time to cook slowly and all the flavor is going to marinate well into this food and um at the end of the dish i like to add about half a teaspoon of roasted cumin or jeera and this is the ground jeera the ground um cumin so I'm adding this right now and this is going to add another depth of flavor into this dish. So it is the roasted um, ground cumin or jeera. We say jeera but most, of, most people will know it as cumin and I'm just adding a little pinch at the end here and this is going to add another depth of flavor. Guys if you don't have it or if you don't like cumin you don't have to put it but this i just added because it add, usually add another depth of flavor if you don't like the turmeric and you don't want to add it you don't have to do so and if you don't like any ingredient that i add into my dish you don't have to do that but you will still get a beautiful kitri at the end of it some things you can take out some things you can add what you like some of the vegetable if you like another kind of vegetable feel free to add them but there is no wrong way just make sure that is something that you like and make it to your likings so guys i'm gonna let it sit for another maybe five minutes on the heat very low heat and then i'll come back and show you guys okay guys so let's check this out and i think it's done yep Everything looked nicely cooked and I like the texture of the rice. I want to take it out when it's um nice. Jessica, if you go too close, the steam is going to fog up the camera. <laughs> Sorry. And um, I want to take it out like this because once it gets cold, it usually gets hard and dried. So I want to take it out with some liquid like that. And this is perfectly done. All the vegetable is cooked. So I'm going to turn the stove off while I'm going to be working on my salmon bite salmon bites i cut them into small pieces because it's salmon bites and this is fresh salmon i have here i'm gonna season with guys and i wash them i always wash my meat fish shrimp whatever i'm cooking but i don't show when i wash them so i just want to let you guys know that i always do wash everything before i cook them so i'm gonna put half a teaspoon of salt salmon is so flavorful on its own you do not have to add a lot of ingredients to salmon and because i'm doing barbecue bites you don't have to add a lot of stuff to this i'm just gonna add um half a um quarter of a teaspoon of black pepper and and i just put half a teaspoon of um salt and then what i want to do now i'm gonna just mix it up a little because i want the salt and the black pepper to cover all part of the salmon so i'm just gonna give this a little mix so we're making sure that every part is covered and i am gonna make a beautiful beautiful um salmon bite today just with salmon black pepper salt and some red onions so i'm gonna put them on a skewer 
and Jessica if you want to pull down a little so I'm gonna cut some onion this size not bigger or smaller just to fit on the skewer with the salmon and what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna take a piece of salmon and a piece of um, a piece of salmon and a piece of onion so I'm putting the on the reason why I'm doing it like this is because I'm using my stove to make this barbecue and I want it to be um, I want everything to sit flat and then I'm gonna put a piece of salmon and then what I want to do put another piece of onion here oh mom this looks really good yeah I know you guys are gonna like this because the whole house likes salmon and then you want to put another piece of salmon here and then that's what we're gonna do and we're gonna cook this with some barbecue sauce and this is what we're gonna serve with our kitchen today so let me continue and i'll show you guys when i finish all of them guys i light up my middle um burner and that's where i'm gonna do these barbecue bites i'm just gonna do it right in the house on my stove i'm gonna let this half warm up a little and i'm gonna brush it with a little bit of um coconut oil because i don't want uh the salmon to stick on the on the thing so we can't um we want it to cook nicely i'm gonna brush this with some coconut oil for no sticking and i'm gonna do that right now and this salmon takes no time at all to cook so i'm just gonna cook them a little on both sides and then i'm gonna rub the barbecue sauce and then that's all it takes it's gonna be ready and done and we won't have to worry about this is gonna take a long time because salmon cooks so quickly guys that's what i love about salmon and it's so flavorful guys i have all my salmon and the um onion all ready to go on this griddle here and i'm gonna start putting them because i can hear the stove um the oil is making noise on the griddle so i'm gonna start putting them and you can hear that sizzle right jess you can hear the sizzle yeah i can hear the sizzle so yeah, i'm just gonna put one by one and i um they're gonna as they cook i'm not gonna cook them too much because salmon takes no time at all i'm just gonna flip them like um, a minute and a half on one side and a minute and a half on the other side and then i'm gonna quickly rub some barbecue sauce all over and it's gonna be ready guys we're gonna flip them uh, like i said you don't want well, it's already cooking see beautiful we don't want to leave them too long on one side it looks because, so good yep salmon cooks so quickly and i'm gonna have to adjust this onion so this side can cook and um, I'm gonna flip them all starting from the first one and I have to make sure that the onion is flat so the salmon can rest on the griddle and then we're gonna do the same for all these ones you don't want to cook them too long you just want to make sure that they're nicely like a minute or so on one side because these are very small pieces of salmon and look how beautiful that is so what i'm gonna do now because this side is already cooked i'm gonna brush them with the sauce and you can use regular barbecue sauce you can leave them just like that but today i want it because the weather is so nice i'm very excited when the weather is nice i want to make this fun and i think when when the weather is nice you think about barbecue a lot and that's why i am in the mood to do this with this barbecue sauce so I'm gonna make it even more special. And you just wanna lightly brush them. You can brush the onion as well. And it's gonna be so flavorful when we're done. So I'm gonna flip them back again. And then these ones are almost done. So guys, they are cooking up nicely. I wanted to put a little bit of a char to have that real barbecue flavor and they take no time at all to cook on this platter here i have some that are done and i already rubbed the barbecue sauce all over guys it looks so beautiful so amazing so i'm just gonna take these ones off and then i'll soon plate and show you guys how everything looks together so guys this is the finish dish this is my kitchen with all the beautiful vegetables and ingredients and here i have a bed of romaine lettuce and some purple cabbage 
and I have here my salmon skewer um, barbecue salmon bite Not watering. that we did. Yeah, just did. And guys, this is what our, our my Saturday lunch is. And I'm just gonna taste and let you guys know how it is. I'm gonna taste inside and then I'm gonna go outside and have my lunch outside in the backyard in the sunshine. Oh my God, I can't wait. I just love the sunshine. Guys, this is, I'm tasting the Kitri. And this here, I'm tasting for all my viewers and subscribers. So cheers guys. Mm. so rich so creamy so flavorful you can taste the split peas all the vegetables that i add in there everything is bursting out one whole mouthful of goodness and guys i'm gonna taste my salmon um my barbecue salmon bites and oh my god look at that salmon is cooked so perfectly well you don't have to cook salmon too long and everything tastes amazing so i couldn't make a better saturday lunch than this i'm gonna go enjoy in the backyard in the beautiful sunshine and hope you guys have something very nice to be planned for today hey guys mommy still have your apron on i didn't even realize yeah, yeah. so guys hope you guys like this recipe Please subscribe to my video if you haven't done so. If you like this recipe, please give me a thumbs up. Until then, bye for now.